Hey, this is Dave with Haggerty on Redline Rebuild Updates. Last time we were over at Thoroughby's, we got our, our block all machined, our rods reconditioned, and we were coming back here to get everything ready for paint. We got a little bit of a lag before we can get into the paint booth, so we thought we would talk over a whole mountain of parts we got here in the backdrop. So, long story short, our goal when we started this project, take the Jeep apart, four liter, whip it all out on the table, put it all back together as fast as we could in stock form. Boring. You're 100% correct, and I appreciate all those comments. In fact, one gentleman caught my ear when he said, you need to put a 4.2 liter crank in it. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. Never thought about it. I was thinking all along, I wanted to do a stroker Jeep motor, but all I was ever thinking was, I need an aftermarket crank, blah, blah, blah. Now's really not the time to try to find that type of stuff. But when the guy said 4.2 liter, I'm like, hold the phone. Are we just mixing and matching stock parts? Because I can get a whole lot of stock parts from rockauto.com and lo and behold, we got a lot of parts. At the end of the day, our four liter goes to a 4.6 liter when we put a 4.2 liter crankshaft in it, okay? So that stroke measured from the, you know, basically your rod center, or I'm sorry, your crank center to the rod center times two for the diameter, it gives you your stroke. So that'll be a little bit larger than our 4.0 liter stroke. And then we get into what do we use for pistons and rods? Well, you do a little bit of this, and you mix 4.2 liter stuff and 4.0 liter stuff. And so for instance, you can do it two ways. You can take a four liter piston, this is our original four liter piston, put it with a 4.2 liter rod, and that makes up all that distance. The other way is to take a four liter rod and mix it ultimately with a, with a uh, this happens to be an aftermarket piston, but a 4.2 liter piston a little bit larger in diameter. And you can see here, I think the best way to show it is your pin height's different between these two pistons. So the distance here to here. Okay. Now, when I was going through all this, I ordered a set of fresh reconditioned 4.2 liter rods. And doing that, I also got a brand new set of pistons. Perfect, everything's working out great until I did the math and said, oh, hold the phone, got a problem. If I take this piston, the four liter piston, and this 4.2 liter rod, it's shorter, and this bad boy is gonna be a quarter inch hanging down on the hole. Not so good for compression, it'd be closer to a Model A at about six and a half. Yeah, so small mistake. So here's my rockauto.com tip of the day. Do your research then do the math to make sure your research makes sense. So here's my math and research. So the calculation is pretty simple. Take your deck height, subtract your pin height in the piston, the rod length, half the stroke of your crankshaft, and what's left over will be your clearance to your deck. So a stock four liter, the four liter block, is going to be our fixed number because we're using that between whatever we put inside of it. Um, and that's 9.45 thereabouts. Um, and then you have pin height on your piston in a four liter is 1.601. Your rod length is 6.125. And the stroke on the stock four liter crankshaft is 3.44. When you go to do the 4.6 liter, you obviously are still using that same deck height in our block. And then our pin height on our piston if we use the four liter piston, we'll still be 1.601. We'll use the 4.2 liter rod, which is a 5.875 length. And then the stroke on the 4.2 liter crankshaft is 3.895. The other mix of rod and piston is a piston with a pin height of 1.353 and a rod of 6.125, which is the four liter rod. So when you go through and do all the math on this, the, the stock 4.0 liter, the piston's gonna be in the hole by four thousandths. And 
when you do the math with the either version of the 4.6 liter, you're gonna be at about 25 thousandths. Now, why does that matter? Because that directly affects your compression ratio. So the smaller that number, the smaller the bore and potentially the higher compression ratio you're going to have. So to change the, the difference between 4 thousandths and 25 thousandths um, piston into the hole, there's a couple ways you could do it. Uh, one would be a, a, a taller piston, but we already have our piston. The other way would be to lower the deck height or to shave that, which is still an option for us. And then third is really all we're trying to address is compression ratio. And you can get there on the cylinder head side or the uh, head gasket side. In our case, I think we're gonna go after a thinner head gasket to bring that compression ratio back up. Hope that was all confusing, because I'll tell you what, it was really confusing for me. And I know John's put up some really cool graphics to make this a lot more understandable than probably just my words. Now with all of that said, if you're new to this type of stuff, you'd be like, why on earth would you go through all that rigmarole to do any of this? Yeah, it's always about more power. I think that beat the daylights out of that. Um, after that, we have lots of parts. And here's the, so we did this a little bit different because lots of times we refurbish everything, right? And that is, the exercise for all intents and purposes. But in some of our discussions, we're like, hey, what if or how much of the parts can we get directly from rock and kind of minimize our time, if you will? So, for instance, we took the easier route and we got a fresh head, cylinder head for our engine. Um, it has stock uh, valve set up and springs and so on and so forth, but that will go along very well with our fresh camshaft from Delta. And what I did here, instead of using a stock replacement camshaft, is use their profile setting that gives us a little bit more duration to help out fill the cylinder uh, chamber with our extra stroke and displacement. So that camshaft will come in real handy. After that, boy, we have a, a numerous, enumerous, numerous amounts of parts. All right, that was a lot of unwrapping boxes, even for me that gets a lot of Christmas presents that are car parts. And here we have a lot of parts for our Jeep. Now, some are very obvious relative to our engine project and the Jeep, and some are not so much. So, obvious stuff like a water pump, an oil pump. Our engine mounts are cracked. It's missing a front uh, park lens, and the bezel is broke as well. So we got a matching set of those. Now to go along with our stroker kit, we have some 24 pound injectors and we have a fresh distributor. We don't have to worry about that. Our housing was cracked on our uh, fan. And maybe the one that most people are scratching their head at is why do you need a key? Well, we have a key and it works very well. Problem is it's the really weird option that the key comes out while you're going down the road. Not so good. Well, here you go, a big table full of parts, stock parts, mind you. So I wanna reiterate, when we started this conversation, we talked about wanting to do a stroker kit and then decided that it made more sense to go just dead stock relative to timelines and such and getting pieces in the door. But then little birdie typed in and said, hey, you can do it with stock parts. So stock parts, a little more ready available. Here they are, we've got them. We can install everything, fingers crossed, right? That we're not missing anything, because that happens, but whatever. And I gotta get my work done. So hey, we'll catch you on the flip side. Get out in the shop, get your work done. And uh, next time around, we'll be doing something different with these parts. <laughs>